Hello and thank you very much for having me. A few words about myself. I'm a senior software engineer at uh, AVL in Austria. I'm also part-time self-employed. And what I want to show you today will hopefully bring a smile to a lot of Linux and open source enthusiasts. So if you have a graphical application that you need to test on different platforms with a lot of different configurations, usually you would use a virtual machine. And every time you start a virtual machine, you have a feeling that something really heavy is going on, like the whole system is dragged down. And if you want to include the virtual machine in some kind of test automatization, you will also have a very hard time doing that. And on the other hand, if you spin up a service in a Docker container, it feels seamless. You don't even notice it. And it's also perfect for test automatization because you can spin up services and test them. And now the question is, why not run a full Linux desktop environment in a Docker container? It will not be a full-blown virtual machine, but a minimum that you need to run a desktop environment in a container. And that's what I want to show you today. So I have prepared a Docker file here, which is a small one, as you can see. And I will briefly walk you through it. So I'm using the Ubuntu image as a base and the release doesn't really matter. You can use any release you want. I chose this one for no particular reason. And I'm installing the KDE flavor of Ubuntu. So the KDE desktop environment, Kubuntu desktop. And why I chose KDE is because it requires the least amount of uh, adjustments and configuration to get this one working. And it basically works out of the box. So that's why I chose KDE. And then we also need to display the desktop environment somewhere. And that's why I use RDP here, which is basically a remote desktop connection. So we will use remote desktop connection to connect to the container uh, over RDP. And you can find this one on any Windows system. Now, another thing that a desktop environment has is you, has, you have your own user. You usually don't connect to a desktop environment with, with the root user. So that's why I'm adding a new user here by the name test user, and I'm setting the password to 1234. Of course, you would not hard code the password and <laughs> the username into the Docker file, but in I actually wanted to show you the credentials so you know what's going on here. So this is only for the demonstration here. Next, I'm exposing the default RDP port, 3389. Um, that's the default RDP port. And then I'm starting the minimum amount of services that a desktop environment needs uh, to run. So I'm starting Dbus, I'm starting systemd logging and I'm starting XRDP, and that's it. So the only thing left here is to build the image and start the container. And I have already pre-built the image here in my Docker desktop. So here it is. And as you can see with 3.71 gigabytes, it is much more than a um, usual image, Docker image would have, but it's also much less than a virtual machine would have. That's also worth noting here. Of course, it would be harder to deploy something like this, but it's not impossible. All right, let's 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 start this one. I will just map the RDP port to localhost and run it. Now the container is running. This was pretty seamless. Now let's go to remote desktop connection and connect to the container. Now we are now inside of the container. This is the XRDP login screen. And now we just need to connect with the user that we've created. Okay. And now we should log in into the KDE desktop environment. And here it is, KDE desktop environment. As I said, this is not a full, full blown virtual machine. This is the minimum that is needed to run a desktop environment. But for most cases, this should be enough for most use cases. And as you can see, you also get updates available. So yes, you can also update the system. You can do basically everything that you would usually do in a virtual machine. 
So let's see how this one is working and if everything is working. So let's just start the uh, uh, file browser and let's create a simple text file. The name isn't important and let's write hello Docker. All right, now let's try a more demanding app like for instance Firefox. Let's see if that works. All right, docker.com. Yeah, this one is also working. And the nice thing about, about uh, remote desktop connection is if you, for some reason, um, exit the session and then do some other stuff on your host machine and at some point connect back to the session with your credentials, you will get the session back as you left it. So that's also pretty nice. And yes, you can also log out completely out of the session. So that's also, that's also possible. And that's how you run a full desktop environment inside of a container. But what if you want to run only a single application or maybe, maybe two applications? Uh, there is also a solution for that. And I have prepared another Docker file here, which is even smaller than the first one. I'm using the same uh, Ubuntu base image. And here I'm installing only two applications, uh, a file manager and a notepad-like application. And the only, the only thing you need to do is just to set the display environment variable to the IP address where an X server is running. So in this case, this is host.docker.internal. This is my Windows system. So the container will expect to find an X server on my Windows system. No, Windows does not have an X server built in. So I will use a third party tool. Uh, this one right here, it is um, called VCX Surf. It is uh, a free software and you don't need to use this one in particular. You can also use um, Sigwin. Sigwin also have an, uh, has an X server built in. So if you want, you can use that one. But for this demonstration, I will just show how this one uh, works. So I will just go with the defaults, next, 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 and finish. The X server should be running. And the only thing missing now is just to build a container, uh, build the image. So let's do this. It should take only a second or two. All right. And now I will leave the Kubuntu image running. It doesn't really matter. Now here's the second image. And if the X server is running, you just need to start it. So let's just run it without any port mapping. And here it is. So this is the file manager that I started in the container. Now this one is running inside the container and it is displayed on my host system. And yes, so let's see if this one, how this one works. Let's just create a simple test file and run the second application that I installed, the notepad-like and let's write hello docker. All right. And now the cool thing about this is if you have multiple windows, you can also do the drag and drop. So this is also a nice feature. And it gets even more interesting if you use hardware acceleration. So some platforms support hardware, accelerate, hardware accelerated containers. And in that case, you can do hardware accelerated rendering. You can do 3D rendering. You can even do uh, crypto mining if you're really into it, although I would not recommend it. But yes, it is possible. So that's what I wanted to show you. You can find me on most social media platforms. I'm also very active on YouTube. And you can find me by this username. So thank you very much.